So we'll talk about to an actual rock star from Colo Banker. Which Colo Banker are you with, Adam? I'm with the uh, Nashville office in, uh, in New Hampshire. New Hampshire. Fantastic. Doing real estate. How long have you been in, in the business, Adam? I've been in the business for six years now. Six years. Good deal. And some trials and tribulations at the beginning, I would imagine, right? Yeah. Actually, I started off, uh, it was three years doing it part-time. And then I went full-time when my second daughter was born. And I joined a team and I was a buyer's agent. And uh, mm -hmm. basically about a year after being a buyer's agent, I said, you know, this isn't for me. You know, I know where leads come from. You know, I can strike out on my own and build my own business. Good. Good. So now you've been full-time. Nothing extraordinary about your market. You're selling homes, older homes, I would imagine, most of them. What's your yeah. average price range? Uh, average price range is around $300,000. Uh, this year, it's been a little bit higher because of the crazy market that we're in. Uh, yeah. So right now, I'd probably say average price point is probably around $340,000. About $330,000. Cool. And um, do you have assistants? Do you have a team or is it just you? So I have two assistants that work with me and they help me with anything from like marketing to, you know, just sending out mailers, you know, running out, helping me with open houses or, you know, <laughs> doing some signage for me or something like that. Cool. Um, so let's start with, we've met what, about two years ago? Yeah. Almost and two years. You came really. to, to a couple of my programs. I've had the privilege and enjoyment to working with you and your decision was, I want to become a good listing agent. And last yeah. year was a good year for you. You obviously didn't read the memo that 2020 is supposed to be a bad year. In the <laughs> no, in the I didn't system. read that memo. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you don't read memos and clearly you succeed in spite of what's going on in the world. Yes. So you had a good year. How many transactions did you close last year? Uh, 27. 27 deals. So that's really good for fairly new agent in a competitive market. Yep. Not bad. You're making good money. You're happy. What's your goal this year? My goal is to do over 30, you know, add a over few 30. each and every year. Um, you know, I'd like to get to uh, 40 for next year, so, but this year mm -hmm. I just want to do a little over 30. So you do over 30, you're selling $300,000 homes. So you're going to make over 200,000 this year. It's going to be a good sure. year. Yep. Are you on track? Yeah, so far. Yeah, it's good, good for you. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So let's dive into the meat and potatoes. What sure. is working for you right now? You're going to close over 30 transactions. How much of that will be listings? Uh, this year, it's going to be over half will be listings because I'm really Good not focusing on buyers at all. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, like you know, like you teach us, you know, I will help my sellers that need to buy. Sure, absolutely. And then friends and family that reach out to me and they want to buy, I'll absolutely work with them. But I'm not spending any money at all whatsoever on marketing to buyers or anything like that. Yeah, um, you don't even run like big Facebook ad campaigns or buy leads of Zillow. You don't do any of that, right? None. No. So my big four um, pillars that you know work best for me are number one is for sale by owners. Mm -hmm. Even in this crazy market, these people still need our help. Um, and just last week, I had one that I was working with for a couple of months, just you know, sending her things, talking to her every couple of days. And you know what? She actually got the house under contract all by herself. And then she called me and said, oh. I'm stuck. I don't know what to do. So I went down, I talked to her and I got my full commission and we're heading to close in two weeks. Good for you. So she was selling on her own, yep. got the buyer and it still didn't work out for her. Yeah. She didn't know what to do. So she called me because I just kept, you know, keeping in touch and giving her, yeah. you know, items of value and just being there for her. Yeah, which is what we teach you. I, I mean, exactly. that's the core of the principle is be helpful, be cool, be of assistance, and the money will follow. And you're clearly following the formula and making the money. And it feels good, right? It feels good to be it so helpful. Excellent. Yeah. You yeah, don't have to I wedge yourself in there and kind of elbow your way in. And you, mm -hmm. you're asked for assistance. Exactly. And the other things that are working for me as I work my sphere of influence quite a bit. Um, and then I also work with investors, the for rent by owners. Um, they're a great lead source. Um, and then, so we have what FISBOs, we have for rent by owners, we have um, my sphere of influence. And then I do a lot with um, geo leads in the neighborhoods. So every, gotcha. time I, every time I get a listing, that's my new farm, hmm. you know? And I do that for every single listing. And it, you know, once I get a listing in that area, I am farming to that neighborhood, you know, 500 people forever. Excellent. 
Yeah. And because they, you already established that you're helping someone there, Correct. it probably stems and, and grows into more business. That's brilliant. I like that Absolutely. very much. All right. So we're going to take it piece by piece, all of these areas. Um, sure. I've been telling you folks, Fizzbos these days think the market is crazy hot. They don't need you. They need you now more than ever. The opposite is true. With so many buyers, such a high demand and so many investors and speculators. And now with the new laws coming into play where 1031 exchanges will change, you will see more investors going after single family homes because they need a lower price range. You're going to have even more competition. That means even more for sell buyer owners, we need you. What was your biggest challenge when you started working with Fizzbos? What was the biggest hurdle? Getting people to trust me, I guess, you know, mm. you know, that was the hard part. But once I realized that I just have to be myself mm. and just keep helping them, they're going to trust me, you know, like familiarity, you know, repetition builds familiarity and trust. So that's what I've been using. And that was, that was my biggest hurdle was just getting people to, you know, open their door to me and let me in and take a look at their place. Gotcha. So, um, you clearly figured it out now. Mm -hmm. how, how does the process work? So where do you find the FISBOs? How do you approach them? How do you work them, Adam? So for me, um, I do one or two things, all depending on my mood that day. So <laughs> one, for one, I can just go to Zillow, right? And I just pull up all the FISBOs in the area and their, their information is right there. You know, that's one way. The other way is I do pay uh, Red X for the leads mm -hmm. and that will just keep things in order. Like, you know, these are the newest ones is these are the older ones, but it all depends on how I feel. Most of the days I'm really just going to Zillow and I'm just going, all right, this one's within an hour away from me. This one's, you know, half hour. And I just, I call, mm -hmm. I text or I email five a day. You call text and email five a day, five days a week. Yep. Five days a week. So you do 25 yep. contact, contact attempts. Gotcha. And out of those 25, how many do you actually get to talk to on average? Talk to I, I, most of them, actually, but um, oh, I, okay. only do, I only get to go see about seven a week. Okay. So you see face-to-face -face seven out of the yeah. 25. Mm -hmm. All right. And out of those seven, how many do you keep in touch? How many follow you follow up with? Between four and five. Between four and five. Okay. When you go see them in person, how much time do you normally spend talking to them? Probably 10 minutes at the most. It's a very quick visit. You know, okay. in, I'm out, you know, just keep it nice. I love when people place. actually follow what I teach them. You know how refreshing <laughs> that is. When you don't spend half an hour, an hour there, that's fantastic. That's really good. So for 10 minutes, what do you normally talk about? I find out what their core driving emotion is. I find out mm -hmm. why do they want to move? And then I kind of focus on that. And of course, I do ask them questions about the house, about the neighborhood, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But my biggest reason for being there is to find out why they want to move. Yeah. yeah. And do they open up to you? Do you feel like within a few minutes you, you are able to figure it out? They all do. They all, they all once do. I'm there, they are all about, they, they want to chat with me once I'm there. Huh. So it really comes down to your art of having good, easy conversations, no pressure conversations. Yep. No pressure conversations. Yep. I'm gotcha. not going there. I'm not saying, hey, please list with me or anything like that. It's just a, a quick, you know, 10 minute visit, you know, checking out the house, you know, introducing myself and that's it. And then I'm out. Then you're out. What type of contact management system do you use? How do you keep I in use, touch with uh, I use LionDesk and um, mm -hmm. I've been using that for a few months now and I, I really like it. It's, it's been keeping uh, all my leads nice and organized for me. Sweet. So you put them in your CRM and then you follow up. Yep. I put them on the, the Fizzburino program. <laughs> yeah. How often do you keep in touch? Every couple of days. Every couple of days. Yep. Okay. And you just follow the sequence. Yep, exactly. You know, I, I'll call them, I'll text them, I'll email them and I mail to them. So I use everything. Hmm. Because you really never know which channel they will respond to, which resonates with them. So exactly. You, you know. never know. And on average, from the time you have the first conversation in a meeting to the time where the listing window opens, how much time do you think usually elapses? Um, it really does depend on, you know, person to person, but I would say mm -hmm. on average, probably, you know, three weeks, maybe I would say mm -hmm. once, you know, because they know the, how hot the market is. And if they know that their home has been sitting for three weeks, then they're thinking, yeah, I probably should call somebody and help. Yeah. And because you don't push, you attract. 
Yeah. Cool. And that results what in a couple of listings a month? Yeah, between one and two listings a month. And you know, I'm not perfect. <laughs> I don't yeah. do the Fizzburino thing absolutely 100 percent all the time. I mess up. You know, I forget to follow up a couple of times. But yeah, the thing is, is you know, you, if you keep doing it and you keep doing it, the people will come, the listings will come. Yeah. You just have to trust yourself and trust the process, right? Exactly. Yep. All right. This is really good stuff, Adam. Really appreciate it. Guys, if you're just joining us, welcome. It's Borino talking to Adam Borino, rockstar real estate agent from New Hampshire, who is crushing it without spending a lot of money, without being too salesy, working his asshole. I mean, you work hard, plenty, no question about it, but it's definitely paying off over $200,000 in commissions. No big team, no bunch of agents, just you and a couple of assistants helping you with the admin stuff. That's really, really cool. So your, your budget is pretty low as far as operating costs, I would imagine. Yeah, under $500 a month. Under $500 a month. I like that. You keep all the money. Fantastic. If you have a question for Adam, just post in a comment. We'll be happy to share them with you. All right. So that's the first bucket. So the Fizzbos are clearly working for you. You got it dialed in. You're just going to perfect it. Are you going to change anything? Do you plan to add anything to it? Make it different? Uh, one thing I've been um, experimenting with is trying to get back over to the house as soon as possible because of the mm -hmm. hot market. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll ask them if I can do some free advertising for them and I'll create mm -hmm. a small Facebook ad. You know, I might spend $5 on the ad, you know, and I'll let it run for four days. Right. And then I call them and be like, Hey, you know, remember that ad I was telling you about that I ran for you, the results are in. I'd love to come over and discuss the results with you. Oh, interesting. Right. So I go over and again, a no pressure situ situation. I just go over mm -hmm. the results. I tell them who's looking at their house. Is it men? Is it women? What age brackets are looking at their house? And then I tell them what I would do to help them. You know, I would, you know, if they're, if it's mostly women, I would tell them, Hey, maybe you should, you know, market more toward them, you know, maybe go into some like, you know, groups that women are involved in, in Facebook, mm -hmm. right. And advertise there for your house. Or that is a men, great you know? idea. Yeah. That is a very good idea. Yep. And it's been working, you know, and people go. Are you guys taking notes? This is brilliant. You run a little inexpensive ad and you bring the insight. Five bucks. Because not only do you provide value, but you're positioning yourself as authority, as yep. an expert. Oh, I love that. Exactly. That is very cool. Yeah. And I'm sure you get a lot of positive response from the Fizzbo. People love it. They love it. They, you know, they're so appreciative of, you know, what I'm doing for them for free. Right. And they're so appreciative of the information that I'm giving them. Mm. Very cool. No wonder they list with, no wonder they call you, hey, we need your help. That's <laughs> awesome. That's very good. So Fizzbo, guys, if you want to learn, I mean, I'm not here. This is the purpose of this, not to pitch you or anything, but we're opening the Fizzbo boot. Did you graduate from the boot camp? Did you do the boot camp? I did. Boot? Yeah. Last yeah. year. Yep. Okay. So I will teach you exactly how to do all this stuff. You will get the follow-up materials, the dialogues, the whole thing. We're going to spend 30 days. You have a system up and running just like Adams. It's the same thing. He's using the Fizbo Reno. So yep. join us, goborino.com slash Fizbo, goborino.com slash Fizbo. All right. So that's the first bucket. Now you said the second bucket, you work with for rent by owner, people yep. who are trying to rent their properties. Tell me more about that. What do you do there? So this is my newest category that I've been working in. And so what I do is, I, again, I use Zillow or I use Red X and I get mm -hmm. these leads and I call them. Now, they could either want to sell their house instead of renting it. They might want me to help them find a renter. I get paid that way, too. Right? Yep. Or they might want to be looking for more properties you know, later on. So I have three opportunities per lead you know, to get paid. Yeah. So, Very cool. Yeah. I just, and again, I just tell And again, them, it doesn't cost you anything. The no. lead acquisition is zero. Zero bucks. You know, you just go on Zillow and you get these people's information. It's right there. So I would just, you know, have a simple conversation with them being like, Hey, you know, if the numbers work, would you be considered, would you consider selling instead of renting it? And these people, they actually want to talk to us. You know, they're not like the for sale by owners or expires. These people, they want to talk to realtors. So I find out with the way problem. things are like the, the, they're just lifted the ban on evictions. There'd be a lot of people who will be fed up with it, evict people and sell the property. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. 100%, you know, and I, I like just that. tell them if the numbers make sense and that's, what's big for them is if the numbers make sense and you know, if you could do a few of those a year. Perfect. I like that. I like that very much. That's very cool. Um, 
Christopher has a question for you, Adam. Sure. Adam, what are your perspectives regarding geo farming with postcards? You mentioned that once you take a listing, you start farming the neighborhood. Do you include postcards, and what's your what's your experience been with postcards? Postcards are fine. Um, it all depends on how much you want to spend per postcard. Um, Caldwell Banker has a, a nice, you know, a package that they send out for us. Um, they do like just listed and just sold postcards. Um, it's it's not so much what the postcard is, it's how many you're sending out. Do you That's, use every door direct or how do you organize your mailing? I want to use every door direct. I haven't done it yet. I know Roxy has told me to use them too. Right now yeah. it's just my girls, they're just putting stamps on things and we're just sending them out. Um, you get just like a, from a title company, a mailing list or something? Yeah, well, I use Red X for that. Mm -hmm. Oh, Red X. Okay, geofarming from Red X. Cool. Very yeah. cool. Do you have the, the, what is it, Onyx, the updated package? No, I don't use the dialer. I don't like using a dialer. I did when I was a buyer's agent. Um, mm -hmm. uh, the lead agent had Mojo. I didn't really like it all that much. Um, but yeah, at Red X, I just, just a single dialer. Just Very cool. Scott has a question for you, fellow PATH student. You guys know each other. He says, so five new follow-up contacts per day, five new and follow-up. That's phone call, text, stop by, mailing. What is the fifth and correct first and four? Oh, so you do five new, he, what Adam is, is, correct me if th this is wrong, but you do five new, you reach to reach out to five new FISBOs, correct. but then you also follow up with whatever number of FISBOs you have on your follow-up. Exactly. Yep. Whatever, whatever the CRM tells me to do that day. <laughs> That's what you do. And you mail them, you text them, you email them, yep. you call them. Is there anything else you do? Um, no. And then I try to go over to as much as I can. Oh, personal visit. Okay. Gotcha. All right. I'm just checking the questions here. So yes, Scott, that, that's what he does. It's, it's pretty simple. I mean, it's really just Fisborino in action. Mm -hmm. um, I see you, you upped your frequency of your social media posts, right? You started doing little videos. I've noticed that you yep. did the video bootcamp with me and you started posting these videos and you do social media, what, almost daily? Or is it daily, daily post? Social media is three to four times a day. And that's you do three to four posts a day. Yeah, and that's posting um, on my um, on my realtor page, my personal okay. page, Instagram, and then a little bit on Twitter. So Twitter, Instagram, business, and personal Facebook, and you do Correct. it three to four times a day. So the purpose of that is to nurture the connections and relationships with your existing circle, so to speak, sphere. Exactly. Mm -hmm. How has that been working for you? It's been working out great. Um, I've get the videos is is probably the most important part of it. And I try to do one to two videos uh, per week. Um, okay. And what those, do you usually do the videos about? What is the content? Uh, most of the time it's, it could be anything from what color to paint your bathroom or, you know, what kind of mortgages are there available for people or, you know, how to price your home appropriately. It's nothing salesy. It's just all helpful hints. Cool. And then what are the posts about? Some of them are personal. I would imagine some are like inspiration, Yep. optimistic outlook on life. And I, I enjoy them. I, I watch, watch what you're posting. I think it's yeah. very So well I do the helpful hints for real estate. I do personal stuff. I do a little bit of humor as well. Um, and then I do some inspirational things because I think that helps me the most. And I want to share that with, with people. Mm. That is a great formula, Adam. And this is what I teach you guys. Something that resonates with you will resonate with your audience. Something that's right. close to you that you find interesting or inspirational, or helpful, or you have some kind of a relationship with, share that. That's very cool. Absolutely. Do you do it yourself or is one of your assistant in charge? How does the mechanics work? No, social media is all me. Um, they don't do anything with that. Um, and most of the time it's early in the morning. I wake up and I figure, okay, what am I going to post that day? I pick a few times and then I just make sure I post it at those times. You post it, good. In addition to the social media, what else is working for you as far as nurturing the connections? I mean, you've been in the business for six years, so I would imagine you have a nice list of past clients, you have a nice circle of friends and, and people who know you. How do you nurture these relationships? So on top of the social media stuff, I'm also you know sending out a couple emails per month. One's a newsletter, one's a, a market report. Um, I also send out a market report four times a year as a mailing. Uh, I'm oh, calling, okay. I'm calling my Is it like an overview of what's going on in the area, active listing, sold, and that, that kind of stuff? Exactly. And it's, you know, the Fisborino letter that you, mm -hmm. that, you, that you use. I just translated it over to the, 
the sphere of influence and it's you know hey rob this is what's selling in the neighborhood you know you know if you you know want to talk give me a call perfect you know, just just real simple and um, some people do call you and talk right ab- absolutely you know the market report is it's funny because it's such a simple piece of marketing but it works so well you know yeah. i send it out in a how do you generate it do you use a platform like cloud cma or how do you put it together to be honest i just use the girls the girls that go to the um whatever uh, mls because i'm licensed in massachusetts as well as new hampshire so they go to whatever mls that they have to go to they just pull mm-hmm. up three sold three active three pending and then they print out the letter put it in an envelope send it out and people find it interesting and they love it <laughs> Very cool. That's really good. Remember, simple is good. Simple yeah. is fine. Be simple. If, on contrary, if you make it too complicated, too much data, too, yeah. if it's too overwhelming to consume as information, it will put people off. Exactly. So this is I'm very a simple good. guy. I like simple things. So <laughs> makes two of us. <laughs> I don't like complicated. I don't like expensive, and I don't like complicated. Well, me either. Other than cars and wine, yeah. that, those are uh, cigars. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That is cool. How many hours a day do you work, Adam? Uh, I work every day pretty much eight to five. Um, sometimes it's a little bit later if I have appointments. Um, I try to take two days off a week. Um, you know, I have the little ones home with me during the day because the, they're not in school right now. Um, so, yeah, sometimes it's, you know, seven or eight o'clock at night, but most days I'm done by five. By five and you're home. Yep. Cool. Supreet has a question for you. As a new agent, what are some recommendations to go for FizzBuild? Well, first you should take the bootcamp and take a shortcut and I'll build the whole system together with you. But 100%. what would you recommend? Someone who's never done FizzBuild is a newer agent. It's a little timid. You know, people can get intimidated by FizzBuild these days. I totally understand that. What would be your advice, Adam? Okay, so my best advice, 100% take the bootcamp. That, that's number one. You have to take the bootcamp. It, it changed my business so much for the better. And it was so worth it. But if you're not going to take the boot camp, the best thing for you to do, it, it depends on if you're comfortable with calling people, texting, or email, right? Oh, there's a lot of people out there. There's a lot of agents that do not like to pick up the phone. You know what? That's okay. If you don't want to pick up the phone, you, you're too shy, you're too nervous, that's okay. Text them or email them. We're in an age right now where those lines of communication will work just as well as a phone call sometimes. And, you know, and it, again, it all depends on my mood that day, what I'm doing. Am I calling, texting, or emailing? You know, if I'm, you know, just feeling kind of lazy, I guess, you know, it's going to be five text messages real quick. And you know what? I'll get five appointments or four appointments that day just from text yeah. messages. So that's what, I, that's what I would do. You know, I would just text or email. Those, that's the cheapest way to do it and definitely the easiest thing to do, you know, especially yeah. if, you're, if you're shy. And it clearly works. So do what works. Yeah, Follow the, this is the coolest thing about real estate, guys. You really don't need to reinvent the wheel. Just copy what's already working. You don't need to sit there for hours wrecking your brain. Just Adam is right here sharing. Yep. Terrific stuff. Good stuff. Thank you. Um, so we talked about FISBOS. We talked about for rent. We talked about your sphere. Yep. Is there anything else that's working for you right now that you would like to share? It's the geo farming. That works really well. And- so... You get a listing in a neighborhood and then you say, okay, circle 500 homes around it. Let's start marketing to them. What is your next step? How do you set that up? Okay. So first thing is get our listing on the contract or, or get, just get a listing, right? Send out 500 or more if you can. Just, just listed postcards, okay? Listing sells. 500 just sold postcards go out, okay? About a month later, 500 of the Barino bio letters go out. Mm-hmm. So, and it's basically just saying, you know, cause we have buyers that are looking to still buy in that neighborhood. You know, if you know anybody that's looking to buy or sell, you know, or sell in the neighborhood, let me know. Okay. Once the 500 goes out, then I start making phone calls and it's not a salesy phone call at all. It's just a, Hey, did you get my letter? That's all. Mm-hmm. And the most, most of the time they'll say, yeah, absolutely. I got your letter. You know, that was a really clever piece of marketing. <laughs> <laughs> That's I go, very cool. It's not, it's not, you know, it's not false advertising. I have actually have a buyer that is looking to buy in the neighborhood still. So, sure. you know, are you looking to sell by any chance or do you know of anybody that's looking to sell by any chance? And it's just, a, it's a short and fun conversation. And, you know, after that, then it's emailing and mailings to them. And then every now and then I'll, I'll send them a text or a call. 
So out of a campaign like that, how many leads, and I know this varies, but what would you average out? How many leads come out of this? Uh, quite a few. So for me to get a listing, right? It's usually after the buyer letter goes out, I usually get the listing and that's 500 buyer letters gets me one listing. Um, but there's probably 10 or 15 people that at least respond to the buyer letter. They Most raise their people, hand. Yep, they that raise their awesome. hand. They'll either email me and say, hey, we're not looking right now, but maybe down the line or, you know, hey, Joan down the street is looking to sell. Maybe you should give her a call or, you know, or some, or they're just telling me how great the marketing piece was and they appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> but even that starts a conversation. That's awesome. That's a good thing. It certainly does. It does. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. You know what I get the sense from you, Adam, and this is not just based on our conversation today, but just overall, you really enjoy working as a real estate agent. Like you really like it. doing what you're doing. It's the best job I've ever had in my life. And I've only had two jobs, but it is definitely the best job I've ever had in my life. And it gives me... Yeah no great freedoms to do things. Why do you think that? Is? Why do you think you enjoy it so much? Uh, I love people. You know, mm. I love helping people. Um, I love being able to create my own schedule. That was a really good thing. I really enjoy that. I, I enjoy spending more time with my children. The, the job I had previous, I was in retail and I could never take time off to go to a dance recital or anything mm. like that. So having this type of a career, it, it affords me the, the lifestyle that I've always wanted. Yeah. Plus, you're getting paid pretty well. Pretty good, yeah. <laughs> I mean, a couple hundred thousand in retail would be close to impossible. Almost, yep. Right. And you can say, okay, this year, I'm going to add another 50,000 or 100,000 or whatever. Yep, absolutely. Possible. Good, good for you. What else do you plan to implement or build in your business? What, what's in the future? So I want to do more with social media and more things like on Instagram with the reels and stuff. I'm just getting more involved with that. I don't think I'm going to be adding anything anytime soon to my four, like to the extra four pillars there. I like the four having four pillars and focusing on those. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what I'm going to focus on, but I do want to add small pieces to everything. Like, you know, like the $5 Facebook ad to the Fizzberino and then whatever else I can do for my sphere, whether it be, um, I do have plan on having a couple of events per year and I'm still working out the details on that, but you know, things like that. I just want to keep adding to those systems to make them better and better. Mm, I love that. Uh, Anna. Hey, Anna, good to see you. Another PATH student. Texting through Twilio really works for her. That's a cool tool. Yeah, thanks for the recommendation. Uh, Adam, Christopher has a good question for you. Do you send just listed postcards even though homes are going under contract in record time nowadays? Christopher, the purpose is not to get a buyer. You're not looking for a buyer. Selling a house these days is the easy part. It is to establish your authority, your presence in the neighborhood. And just listed indicates, hey, somebody selected me. You should too. Exactly. That's why we send those cards, not to get a buyer. Yep. Exactly. Right? Would you agree with that? One hundred percent. Okay. So yeah, even if it goes under contract quickly, that just shows your competence. That's exactly. really good. Yep. So Christopher would like to know: Is it still worth, in your opinion? Absolutely, yes. You see, it's working. Yep. One hundred percent. But notice what Adam does, and that's important to point out. It is not just I send some cards and hope people call me. Right. It's part of the process. It's a system. That's your new farm area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where he sends the cards, sends the letter, makes the phone calls, interacting with people. It's the interaction and connections that will at the end get you business. So I become hope, forward. just sending a postcard, people will flock to you. That's, exactly. That's mm -hmm. not enough in most cases. But that's a good question. Oh, good question. Supreet wants to know, when you do a geo farming, if you don't have a listing, how do you go about farming? Do you ever farm an area or market in an area where you don't have listings, Adam? Absolutely. 100%. So how do you go about it? Do you pick somebody else's listing? No, I, I don't do that. However, I'll pick a for sale by owner's listing and I'll market around them. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's so good. <laughs> that is so good. And, and it's even cool because you tell the Fizzball, hey, I'll help you market in the neighborhood. Yep. Exactly. I yep. love that. I, I, between all the visits I go to, I see this neighborhood, I get out of my car and I look around and I go, I like this neighborhood. I write it down. I make sure I go back and I get the geo leads from Red X and again, my new farm. Yep. Love that. That's awesome. Yep. You guys, you should be taking a bunch of notes and don't you fucking come crying to me that there are no listings. There is no inventory. 
Bullshit. You're not doing what it takes to get the sellers, to get the listings, to get the leads, to do the work. And clearly you see, you don't need complicated systems. You don't need to spend thousands of dollars on expensive ads. You don't need to do something shitty, shady, slazy, salesy. You're just helping people. And you do it in the way that clearly Adam is enjoying his work. He's making good money. He's a happy dude. Love that. Anything else before we wrap this up that you want to throw in there, Adam? Any advice for folks who clearly are here watching this and listening to you who want to make it, who want to be where you are, earning good living, helping people and feeling good about your work. What else would you include? Keep pushing forward. Don't give up. It's a hard business, but if you put in the work and you put in the time, you're going to be successful. Everything Hmm. that I've, that I've said today and everything that coach teaches us, it works a hundred percent. It works. You know, you just have to put in the work. And that's where I feel a lot of agents, they, they drop off because, you know, well, seeing, you know, seven for sale by owners, is, it's hard. It is hard. It's my whole Saturday sometimes, you know, going around mm-hmm. and seeing four or five of them, you know, but you have to put in the work in order to be successful. So yeah. just keep pushing forward. I'm always here. I'm always on rock stars. Coach is always here as well. We're always here to answer any questions that anybody has. I'm, I'm an open book. I will tell you what I do and how I do it. You know, just don't give up and just keep pushing forward. That is very good. Adam, I have a question for you. Sure. With all these crazy news in the world with COVID and with now we don't have fucking gas and everything, there is no inventory. Market is going crazy and all that. How do you maintain such a cool, balanced, steady, positive attitude? What helps you stay grounded? Because you clearly are. And it's not an act. You're not like, yeah, I'm going to jump up and down to the Tony Robbins thing. There is more to it. What helps you stay this grounded and optimistic? Have a good support system. You know, mm. whether it, you know, you be your significant other, your children, your parents, you know, friends and family, have a good support system. They'll keep you grounded. Um, positive affirmations every single morning. You know, that helps me. Um, and then just getting, you know, having having that support system and having people praise you for the things that you're doing makes me keep going. It keeps me strong and it, you know, it just keeps me pushing forward. Very good. Good stuff. Any good books you can recommend? Um, well, I, I like this one here. I've been reading this one. It's uh, grit. I don't know if you've read that one before. Grit. Yes. Yes. Good. Grit book. is yes. really good. Um, you know, there's tons of good books out there. Anything by Tony Robbins is really, really good. Mm-hmm. Um, you are a badass was really good. You recommend. Oh yeah. Jensen Sarah's book. Excellent. Yes. Great great recommendations. Yeah. They're all great books. All right. Anna says, uh, so inspirational, really enjoyed it. Question from Scott. How many areas do do you farm at time? How many do you normally go after? That, That is a great question. So again, as soon as I get a listing, that's it. So if I'm getting one to two listings a month or three to four listings a month, I'm adding three to four farms per month. So, yeah. and again, I mean, it's, it's, it's cheap advertising. You're just sending out, you know, the postcards, buyer letters, and then you're just emailing them and talking to them on the phone. So it's, mm-hmm. it's nothing expensive. And if you keep doing it, like coach says, you know, they're going to end up trusting you and knowing you. So familiarity, yeah. you know, re- repetition, Through repetition. Yeah. yeah. I love that. And just statistics. The latest statistics I saw from the U.S. Census Bureau is 9.8% of the U.S. population will be moving in 2021. Mm -hmm. So that means if you have 500 homeowners, statistically, that's 50 potential moves Mm -hmm. in the next 12 months. And that seems to be pretty consistent with the results you've been getting. Yeah, right around there. So one listing means more listings. Right. And you got to have a great mindset, too. I mean, especially with for sale by owners, some are going to list with you. Some are going to sell on their own and some are going to yeah. other agents, you know, don't beat yourself up about it. Just keep, keep pushing forward. Keep going. Don't yeah. give up. Improve your systems. I mean, Adam has shared a lot of his system. Notice how everything he does in his business is broken down into steps. So that removes the overwhelm, the confusion, the feeling like shit, there's just too much to do. It's only these steps. And if you repeat them, that will allow you to evaluate. Is it working? You can improve them or replace something that is not working. That is really good. Excellent stuff, man. I really enjoyed this. This was loaded with lots of good advice. Anything else we're going to throw in before we wrap this up? That's all I can think of right now. No, good stuff. All right, Mr. Adam, what areas do you cover if someone has a good referral for you? 
So I do pretty much all of uh, New Hampshire. I'll go anywhere in New Hampshire. And I'm also licensed in Massachusetts. I do most of Mass. Um, I actually, I don't go into Boston. There's a, too many one, one way streets for me. I get too confused. So I don't go into Boston. <laughs> But anywhere. but anywhere in New Hampshire and part of Massachusetts, yeah. uh, give us your number or your email, how folks can get hold of you or where do they get in touch? Oh, my email is simple. It's just my full name at gmail.com. So Adam Brunel at gmail.com. Uh, and then my, my cell phone number, if you want me to give you that, that's fine. It's uh, 603-759-5567. Cool. So send Adam some referrals. You know your clients will be in good hands. No question about it. Absolutely. I would totally trust my man, Adam, for sure. All right, you guys, with that, you got some work to do. Spend a little time, review your notes, review what we talked about today. And what I would encourage you to do, instead of picking up 10 things, pick one and say, okay, this one seems to be fairly easy to implement. This one resonates with me. I'm going to focus on this. Not perfect. Just start implementing one step at a time. And then once you have that up and running, figure out the next one and the next one. And then take my invitation. Come to the bootcamp with me. And I promise you, of my word, you will have a system, operational system. See, and Adam knows this because we've known each other for, for quite some time. My hardest job is not to teach you real estate. I could do that. I've been doing it for 20 years. I got that down. That part I know. It is to convince you that you can do it. You can succeed. There is business out there and you can make the money. It's the mindset part. That's always the biggest hurdle. Because once we have that out of the way, we can just focus on building you the systems, building the steps. And Adam clearly is doing it, taking the steps and enjoying the process. It doesn't need to be struggle. Real estate is hard, like Adam said very accurately, but it doesn't need to be struggle. It can be enjoyable, challenging, but also rewarding. Am I right? Absolutely. All right, my good sir. Please join me and thank you, Mr. Adam Brunel, for such great, great stuff, great insights. All right, you guys, with that, wishing you all a fantastic, productive day. I'll see you on the bootcamp. We are starting on Wednesday. So if you want to jump on and do it now, we need to send you some books and some resources. And I'll see you soon. My name is Borino. I'm your coach. Honored to be here today. Adam, thank you so much. We'll talk soon. Well, let's go get him. Bye, everybody. Thank you.